Hi guys, today we're going to look at the Daikin MMI heat pump interface to have a look at the potential options you might want to use to refine your efficiency and make it run as cheaply as possible. So, um, from home screen, we're always going to go in here and let's go down to main zone. Main zone. Set point mode. Fix the weather compensation. So fix, if your Daikin is set to fixed, turn it off, put it on weather dependent, right? Fixed just means a fixed flow temperature, Excellent. which we don't want. We okay. want weather compensation. Heating WD curve, weather dependent curve, right? Correct. I'm guessing. So what we do here is typically we'd set, select 45 and we'd turn this down to whatever our system design temperature is. So if we design our systems for a maximum flow temperature of 40 degrees, we turn this down to 40 and then the minimum temperature I would advise to set to your um, your main room temperature. If you like it 21, I would advise to turn it 21. However, the Daikin heat pumps, they cut out at 25 degree flow temperature anyway to protect the uh, compressor. So if we set this down from 25 to our room temperature, 21 as I mentioned, that's actually going to stop at 25 degree flow temperature anyway but it will still change that pitch then what we want to do is make sure that we change our design temperature which is minus five here we, we designed say in this sample for minus three so to change minus five to minus three and that helps angle our pitch sometimes what I often find is that in the interim months you don't need it as cold as you need it in the in the summer in the winter sorry so in the winter you might want a higher flow temperature so you can actually change the pitch of this or the angle of the curve by sliding this around but this will get you started there's more information on this kind of way of setting up on our three steps to maximize heating efficiency video which goes into this in massive detail um, and then um, the other end of the control is your room temperature 21 21 that's known as your foot point, which we talk about in that video a bit bit more. So what the way we would advise to set up a system would be for the first, could be up to six months, turn all of your individual room stats, even if it's on the floor, to 35 degrees room temperature. Then if you're too warm, we go in, dial down your curve, we either tell them to do it or show them how to do it, or if they're elderly, we go and do it. And we play around with the curve till the curve gets them to 20, 21. Then we'll turn the room thermostats down to one or two degrees above the weather compensated temperature. So they'll act as an overheat limit. Saving. Cool. Emitter type. Rob's been telling me that this basically means fan coil, radiator, or is underfloor heating got underfloor heating on there? Well, radiator is more responsive. Underfloor heating is slower response. Fan cool, faster response, right? Yeah, okay, great. We're just going to have radiators. Um, I've actually got radiators, and I've set mine to fan cool, just purely for the delta because T. I can have the five degree delta T. So yeah, bear in mind this always this also changes the delta T for the flow and return. It's just set us the radiator, which sets the delta T for eight. So next set point range. This is heating minimum minimum flow temperature, maximum flow temperature. Yes. So uh, maximum temperature, I mean, we, we don't need 60. So it would, it might go up to 60 if perhaps the heat pump was oversized or something. So if we brought it back down from 60, that may help, but then your heat pump's oversized anyway and the cycle's gonna be shorter. Yes, you can set that to whatever you wish. Well, it kind of probably doesn't matter because we've already set weather compensation, does it? Like That's it's, not gonna, it's yeah. not gonna see it anyway. Some other heater manufacturers, Viesman and Valent, for example, potentially need be they track the hot water store temperature and you, you can set your flow temperature to, to X degrees above the store temperature to slowly and gently heat it. Daikin um, naturally do that automatically out the box. They set it for roughly around 10. You always want to try and do that. If it's trying to jump 25 degrees above the store temperature, like Valence come preset, you want to turn that back down. The only thing I would say to be careful of there is you don't want to turn it so low as to the unit cycling before it completely heats the store. Because if it's cycling on a domestic hot water reheat, it's not going to be good for efficiency at all. So you have to make sure it's continuously running whilst heating hot water. Right, next one is control. And we've got external room thermostat, which means... Uh, just a third party room thermostat. Which you never want with a heat pump. So if you have got that, that's fine. But to get maximum efficiency, we want to use a we want to use Daikin controls on Daikin's main MMU. 
MMI. MMI. <laughs> Which I'm never going to get right. Um, so uh, so we don't want to use external room th thermostat. We want to use um, a room thermostat and install a room thermostat because it's going to be more intelligent control. Leaving water is fixed temperature uh, well, flow. Fixed so, you know you were saying about using weather compensation. Oh, this will be pure, pure weather compensation. Pure weather compensation. Oh, that's amazing. So, Daikin, do pure weather compensation. You're not going to have to play around with that curve and really tune it in quite accurately to, to get it to work nicely. Having said that, if you've got underfloor heating with thermostat in each room, you can set all your thermostats. Again, refer to the third party controls video. All your room's thermostats to say 30. Play around with your curve throughout the whole year. This is for more geeky uh, homeowners or installers that are going to spend a lot of time getting maximum efficiency. Most people won't do that. Get it sort of as comfortable as possible. Then you can bring in your external controls so it they close down the actuators as little as often and let the heat pump pump around as much of the system continually as possible. That's going to drive up your efficiency. So leaving water is pure weather compensation, as I we refer to it in our video, but all manufacturers have their own terms. External room thermostat on off. And room thermostat is a modulating room thermostat like we've got here. Delta T, delta T heating is eight. Um, that's because we've selected radiators. Modulation. Right, modulation is where we can, if you don't have room thermostats already everywhere indoors to uh, give some sort of internal reference on your heating, we might want to use the Daikin only um, uh, internal controller, it has to be the Madoka, or the air sensor, which is just literally a sensor with no interface. And we can change the no to, uh, uh, do I turn this one? A no to a yes. Right, now we can turn this dial and this will, rather than us, once we've got the weather compensation perfect, pulling in the external third-party thermostats down to act as like a break, instead we can rely on this to shift the flow temperature off the weather compensation curve by different amounts of degrees in order to refine um, the, the correct flow temperature for the house to get a perfect room temperature, basically. Um, and, and what you want to do is for less responsive houses, so for older houses, higher heat loss, uh, more thermal mass, um, uh, underfloor heating, stuff like that. We want as close to zero as possible. Uh, and for older properties, with uh, sorry, newer properties of radiators, low thermal mass, uh, high solar gain, for example, we want it as low as possible to zero, but you will have to do it higher. Maybe you want it four, five, six degrees. I mean, what's this go up to? Probably 20. It goes up to 10, so closer to 10, but you still always want it as low as possible. If you have higher number here, the less efficiency you have, but the more reactive it will be and the more accurate your room temperature will be at all times. You don't need that high level of response in old properties, though. So I'm going to set that to one degrees for my example, just to trim it in a tiny bit. Weather dependent curve type. Two points and slope offset. If I select um, slope offset, I'll just press that onto a slope offset, yeah. And then we go back to weather curve. Yeah. It's just changed this basically, hasn't it? That's yeah. all it's done. Ah, yeah, okay. This is another way of you getting your, your curve, refining your curve, so it doesn't flatline. So we can get our angle. Also there's the slope and pitch, isn't it? So the slope is that, the pitch is that. So we turn the left hand So up. that that's pitch. Now slope is that. Okay. Hi guys, producer Harrison here. In the next part of this video, Adam talked us through how to set a nighttime setback temperature. But while we were editing, James, one of our highly skilled, vetted and verified heat geek elites, uploaded his own video on the Daikin controls. And we thought that his instructions were fantastic. If you find that you want to have lower flow temperatures during the night, uh, for a, a cooler temperature during the night, you can add a schedule. So if you go to heating, is it on heating? No, nope, it's on main zone. Schedule, you can add a schedule that will bring up the heating schedule. So if we can add a schedule, yes, bring up a heating schedule, then you can edit that and state what time and what plus or minus flow temperature you want. So during the day, it might be zero. During the night, it might be minus three or four, and that will lower it maybe down to 18, 19 degrees during the night. We only want a two degree setback of comfort over the night, so the heat pump has to work harder during the day 
to get back up to temperature but that is a way to lower the overall house temperature during the night by adding a minus figure on the night times. So you can set these up throughout the week. You can copy and paste them to different days, um, but that is a way this custom particularly wants it at 20 degrees throughout. So they will find a flow temperature that will suit them um, come, come when it starts settling in the system. Please be sure to subscribe to James's channel and if you're interested in becoming a Heat Geek Elite, getting an Elite badge on the Heat Geek map and Priority Leads, check out the link in the description. Um, I think that's it for this controller. Um, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>